So I checked my YouTube channel for the first time today in probably about two weeks and noticed that one of my videos, my KDE Plasma Customization Tips and Tricks video, uh, recently passed 10,000 views and I recently passed 300 subscribers, which is about 300 times more successful than I thought I would ever be. So um, to everyone subscribed, I, I wanna give you uh, my sincerest thanks and gratitude. Um, I don't know why you watch my channel, but I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, it, it's a strong motivator knowing that the content that I'm producing is at least resonating with some of you guys. And given the success of my KDE Plasma customization video, I decided to make a sequel to it. Uh, hopefully a little bit better video and audio quality since the last time I've done this, but also to just uh, refresh the desktop and let you guys know what I'm working with right now and possibly inspire you to change up your desktop to uh, have it a little bit more functional or a little bit more modern or a little bit more sleek. Uh, so all that being said, let's jump into it. So you'll notice here that I am on a fresh KDE Plasma installation. Uh, my current system right now is Endeavor OS, uh, which I've been test driving for about a, a week or so, and I'm really, really enjoying Endeavor, Endeavor OS, so I'll probably make a video about that sometime in the near future. Uh, but with any new installation, the first thing I like to do is come over here to Settings. I like to look for Shortcuts. And I like to create a custom shortcut here. Uh, shortcut, add application, search for console, that's your terminal emulator, uh, change the active shortcut. I like to just set this to the super key or the windows key and enter or meta and return just because we're going to be in and out of the uh, terminal a lot during the installation process. So I like to just have that at the ready so I don't have to keep searching for it or keep opening it up manually from uh, like my application bar or anything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. There are some prerequisite uh, programs that you're going to need to install. I'll link video descriptions, or I'll link videos in the description that you guys can follow along with. I've already created video, videos on several of these, so go ahead and follow along with those, and then come back to this video once you have them installed, but I'll let you know what they are right now. First one, um, if you just type yay, Thank you to the, the subscriber, or thank you to the comment that showed me that you don't always have to do the search uh, query protocol for yay. Uh, it's really convenient. If you just type yay and then some keywords that you're looking for, so like SDDM, it'll show you a list of all the stuff that has SDDM in them, and then you can just press the number and hit enter. Really awesome, instead of always having to do yay dash capital S, lowercase s, and then your query. Uh, so thank you for that. That's a really nice quality of life upgrade. Uh, the first two you're going to need here are SDDM, which should already be installed depending on your um, system that you've installed or the distribution that you've installed. But the second one here might not be. This is uh, the from the extra repository SDDM-KCM. This is a configuration module for SDDM. You can see that I already have it installed on my system, so make sure that you get that installed on your system. Um, that's component number one that you're gonna need. Go ahead and exit out of that, control L to clear. We're also going to search for GTK KDE. And you'll see this one here at the bottom, KDE-GTK-Config. You can see that I already have that installed. Um, if you don't have that installed, make sure you get that installed. Another thing you're going to need is the Git package, which is right here, number six, or you can just yay dash S, yay dash capital S um, git. The fast uh, distributed version control system, we're gonna use git to install yay, so you're gonna need that on your system. And then finally, the last thing you're going to need is the package that I've been using currently, the AUR helper yay. So I've got a video on that. If you wanna click on the video link to install yay on your system, if it's not already installed, we're gonna use that to get a couple of um, packages from the Arch user repository, the AUR. So if you don't have Yay, make sure you get that installed. Uh, oh, actually, one more thing. Yay, uh, Kvantum. So we need the Kvantum manager, which I actually don't have installed. Um, so that's gonna be this one here, 
from the community repository, Kvantum-QT5. So I need that installed on my system. All you need to do once you use yay to search for it is hit one and it's gonna install that first package there. Type in your password, hit yes, and the Kvantum manager should install. So we'll need that as well. Uh, so those are the things you need. Yay, git, sddmkcm, the GTK KDE configure, and the Kvantum manager. So make sure you get those five packages installed before we begin. Once you have those installed, we're going to start with a fresh desktop, Windows Enter to open up our um, terminal, and we're going to search for the latte doc. So that command is just going to be yay latte doc. It should populate with all of the packages that have latte doc in there. The two that we're gonna be greeted with is the AUR version of the latte doc right here, latte doc dash git and the community repository latte doc right here. We actually want number two in this case. Number one is kind of um, uh, an outdated version of latte doc or maybe uh, it just hasn't been vetted by the, or, or it's, it's the vetted version of latte doc that um, is hosted by the official repositories. We actually want the most up-to-date version to do some of the more aesthetic things that we're looking to do. So go ahead and hit two here and hit enter and let that install. It's gonna take a good amount of time depending on your system. So I'll cut the video and I'll meet you back here once the um, latte doc from the AUR is finished installing. Okay, you can see on my end that the um, plasma doc has just finished installing. I'm sorry, not the plasma doc, the latte doc has just finished installing. We're going to clear the terminal here Let's come over to our launcher and launch latte doc. So this is gonna create a little app doc here at the bottom, similar to Mac OS's default uh, app doc. This is the latte doc here. And you can already see I've got some programs opening, my OBS, my droid cam, the terminal, uh, this little clock widget, file explorer, and whatever this is supposed to be, which I don't have installed on my system. Um, and it's sitting right on top of default uh, doc here from uh, KDE Plasma. So the first thing I wanna do is actually close out my terminal. I'm gonna right click on my, what looks like the, the start menu. I'm gonna go enter edit mode. I'm gonna come over here to more options. It's probably behind my camera right now, but it's on the right hand side of the screen. It says more options, go ahead and click on that. And then up at the top, of that um, pop-up panel. It'll say remove panel with a little uh, red trash icon next to it. Go ahead and remove the panel, close the dialog box, um, and then you can exit out of that and you'll just see this dock here at the bottom now similar to Mac OS. And so we're gonna do some configuring on this before we put a top bar here at the top. So go ahead and right click on this, go to edit dock, and then toggle advanced here. Um, some of these settings might be sitting behind my camera on OBS, so I apologize if you can't see anything, but I'll do my best to explain um, what I'm doing. So first thing, we wanna come over here to appearance, the appearance tab. Um, I'm on a 1080p panel, so 64 pixels for absolute size is a little bit too, too much screen real estate for me, so I like to lower that maybe down to like 54 is usually pretty good. Yeah, a bit smaller. You can leave it where you'd like. 54 might be tiny if you're on a, like a 4K panel. Um, so just play around with that slider and get it to where you like it. I like mine around 54. Um, this zoom on hover is this feature here. I absolutely hate zoom on hover. So I'm gonna take that down to zero. So now when I'm hovering over the icons, it doesn't zoom in, it doesn't have like this wavy effect. If you're coming from Mac OS or you, you're trying to go for the Mac OS aesthetic, you'll probably leave that on. I'm not even sure if Big Sur or the subsequent updates even do that anymore, um, but feel free to play around with that. Uh, the length I leave at 100%. The margins we'll come back to in a second, but I'm more interested in this part here, background. So under background, you see a couple of um, uh, setting size, opacity, radius, shadow, and then you have some tick boxes for blur, shadows, outline corners, that sort of thing. Uh, I like to change the background from 
to 100% and it creates this nice little box around the panel. And I like to change the opacity down to around 30%. So it becomes uh, semi-translucent there. And you, if you don't want it blurring the background, feel free to turn off blur and it will make it just transparent uh, without the blur effect. You can see that here. I actually think the blur looks a little bit more uh, modern and a little bit more aesthetic in my opinion. So I like to leave the blur on. Um, do what you feel comfortable with. So the next thing I like to change actually here is the radius. So the radius is going to control the roundness of the corners. So if I change radius all the way to 50%, you'll notice that it rounds the corners um, at a 50, I, I guess it, it would be a quarter round, right? So you see this quarter round here and then it goes down to meet the screen. In order to get, I, I think that looks a little bit weird um, when it does the quarter round and then meets the screen. So I like to go to margins and peel that off the screen edge by three pixels. And that way it has this nice little floating dock with these nice half round edges instead of the quarter round meeting the bottom of the screen. Again, you can control the radius percentage if that's like a little bit too round for you. Maybe try like 10% and you get some softer corners. Try like 30%, they're a little bit more aggressive, almost like a squircle. Um, but I prefer just the, the half round. I think it looks nice and it's gonna look really nice when we get the top bar in place as well. So I leave radius at 50%. I leave blur and shadows on. And I think that's about it for the settings uh, for my bottom panel. Uh, the last thing I wanna do actually is come over here to the clock widget, right click on it and hit remove analog clock. So now that we've removed the analog clock, we can go ahead and close that out. Um, now here, it's probably behind my camera, but at the bottom left hand side of the Latte Doc edit screen, you'll see a button that says plus add dot 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 and a down caret. Go ahead and click on that and then hit empty panel and it should create this top bar that we're gonna come to and edit in a second. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and close our edit from the bottom panel and come over here and come to the top part of our screen, right click, edit panel, and now we'll be editing our top bar. So before we even add any widgets, I like to change some settings here on the top bar. Let's go over to appearance. Absolute size at 40 pixels on a 1080p screen is a bit large for me. I like to change that to 24 pixels and that looks a little bit more reasonable for top bars. Again, you can play around with this and get it to a comfortable size on your screen. Again, if you're on a higher resolution display, this might be tiny for you, so you might wanna increase it to 36 or 40. Um, use your discretion here, play around with the sliders and you know whatever you think looks nice, just leave it there. The next thing I wanna come down to is opacity. That's under the background header. I'm gonna change opacity to match my bottom panel at 30%. So I'm gonna leave that at 30% opaque and I'm gonna hit the blur button just so they're both on blur, my top panel and my bottom panel. Now, similar to what we did with the bottom panel, I'm gonna change radius to 50% and that's going to round the corners as soon as I offset the length and offset the screen edge. So let's come back up to where the margins header is. Let's change the screen edge from zero pixels to th three pixels. So it's consistent with our bottom panel. And now the length, we're gonna change the maximum length from 100%, which takes us all the way to the screen edge. And we're gonna change that down to 99%, which is gonna peel it off the screen edge a little bit. And you'll notice that right when I did that, we have these half rounds and this kind of like floating top panel, which looks really nice and really modern. I'll go ahead and close the edit for a second so you can just see what that looks like before we even add any widgets. I absolutely love this setting. Um, I believe the first time I saw something like this was on uh, the Linux Experiment channel. I think Nick is his name. He has a setup, setup very similar to this. And so I just stole it. I think it's great. I love the rounded corners on both the bottom panel and the top panel, so that's what I like to do now. If it's not really your thing, then you don't have to peel it off. You know, you can just leave the length at 100% and you'll never see those rounded corners. 
And again, you can change the aggressiveness, the aggression of those rounded corners too, to make it a little bit more uh, squared off if you don't like the, the half rounds that we have going on right now. That being said, we're gonna come back in, right click, edit doc, and finish our editing. So we're on the appearance tab right now. I want you to come over to behavior. I want you to scroll down on behavior and for, let's see, we have under floating, hide floating gap for maximized windows. So there's a little satellite box that you can hit there, or a little checkbox you can hit there. You wanna check that, hide floating gap for maximized windows. Um, what that's going to do is when you go full screen on an application, here, I'll, I'll show you. Let's turn that off for a second. Let me close this out and I'm gonna open up my terminal. I got my terminal here, let's make that full screen. Now you'll notice when my terminal is full screen, we still can see these three pixels up at the top and these the space between our screen edge and the rounded corners of our top bar. And so that's kind of annoying to look at. Um, it looks really inconsistent when you're using it on a daily basis. So if we right click, edit doc, go to behavior and select hide floating gap for maximized windows, close that out. Now when we go to maximize, it becomes a square top bar. You'll notice that the three pixels up at the top that we've had are gone and our rounded corners are gone. The last thing I wanna do just to make it a little bit more consistent, go back to edit doc, this time go to appearance, scroll down and hit prefer opaque background when touching any window and uh, leave that selected. So now when we use, or when we go full screen again, it turns it into whatever your theme is instead of leaving it transparent. So we're gonna be selecting some sort of dark theme a little bit later. It's gonna look really nice when you go full screen and have that automatically take care of itself. It's great. All right, so let's go ahead and close the terminal. Let's add our widgets at this point. So we're gonna right click on our panel. We're gonna to go to edit doc just so we can see the um, splitters here. We're gonna right click again and go to add widgets. Uh, the first widget I wanna add is just our system tray which is already installed. So search for system tray and we're gonna drag that into our right hand corner and our system tray will populate over there. The next thing I wanna add is some sort of application launcher. So if you just search launcher, hmm, typing isn't working. Let me go ahead and restart that. Add widgets and we're searching for launcher. So you have a couple of different um, options here as far as launchers are concerned. I prefer just the uh, application menu. It's more like Windows Classic. Uh, it just has cascading windows. So you know you go to file and then you go to internet and then you see your browsers there. I prefer that one, but there, there are multiple ones you can select depending on your needs. I'm just gonna select application menu and drag that into my upper left-hand side. And now I wanna get a couple of new widgets. So I'm gonna close that out one more time just to make sure that I can type. And we're gonna go add widgets. And there's a download button at the top of the header bar here called get new widgets. Down, download new plasma widgets, go ahead and select that. Give that a second to load. And there's gonna be a couple that we wanna install here. The first I'd like to install is called the better inline clock. So I'm gonna search for inline, all one word. And you'll see of the three options here, better inline uh, clock by Marianne ARLT. I'm not sure how to say that, but that's the one I like. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And then this next one, I always forget what it's called, um, but I usually just search for name. And what this is, it's gonna work hand in hand with a global, um, global menu bar that we're gonna add to the top bar in a second. And so search for name and scroll down until you see, I think it's this one here. The 
application name Mac style. Let's go ahead and grab that one. Hit install application name Mac style. And then we'll go ahead and close that out. Right click, add widgets, search for inline. It should be installed at this point. You can drag that right into the center of your bar. Didn't get centered. There we go, right into the center of your bar. And then we're going to search for name again, and it should pop up that one we just, right here, application title. Let's go ahead and put that in. And then we're also going to add the global menu, which is already installed right next to our application title. So now that we've got our header bar uh, populated with our widgets, I like to edit the widgets um, just to suit my needs a little bit more. So the first one I'm gonna edit is going to be our application menu. So if you hover over it, you'll see the edit uh, option right here, configure applet, go ahead and click on that. I like to change the icon. I don't really care for the KDE icon. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click choose. On the right or left hand side over here, we see a drop down menu that says applications. Hit that and select all, and then go to search icons and search for round. I really enjoy the choice round right here. I'm gonna apply that and I'm gonna hit okay. I like that as my launcher button, but again, you can come over here, go to edit, um, search for whatever icon you like. If you just come over here to all again, uh, whatever system icons you have installed, feel free to scroll through them. And if you like some other icon, feel free to select that. If there's nothing there that really works for you aesthetically, uh, feel free to get online and download an image and use that. Uh, but I prefer the round one. It's already pre-installed and it looks nice on a completed system. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. The next one I like to configure is the application title. So I'm gonna go into there and I like to use show no active uh, window label. I like to change that to custom text. So when there's nothing um, being displayed, when there's no program open, it's going to display this text. And I like to just turn that off. So no active window custom text. Currently it defaults to Plasma Desktop. I delete that and hit apply. So now when, let me go close this out, when nothing's open, it doesn't say like Plasma Desktop or Latte Doc or anything like that. It's just completely blank. And when I go ahead and open up a program, say my console, then you'll see it pops up with the console name and then the global menu bar up here, very similar to Mac OS styles. I had some users asking me about that on the last video I made. So that's how you get that done. Global menu, application title, uh, and then turn that off. So when you close it, everything disappears. That being said, I need to finish configuring a couple more things. So I'm gonna to come to edit doc and I'm gonna to go to better inline clock. And I like to change the format and the size of the better inline clock here. So first thing I'm going to do is come down here to uh, date format. I'm going to go to custom date and I'm gonna hit apply. And so that just shortens it up. I like the DDD space D format, looks really clean. Um, and then I also like to use a fixed font size. And on my system, I use 16 points there. That's gonna make it a little bit smaller up here. Um, you guys, again, feel free to change the custom or change the font size to your liking, depending on the resolution of your display. It might be too big, it might be too little, um, but use what feels comfortable for you. And then I like to hit OK there and close out the um, Latte Doc editor. And we should have a nice finished edited little Latte Doc right here. Um, so this is how I like to keep this on both the top and the bottom panel. I'm going to go ahead at this point and um, put my most used icons or my most used applications down in my bottom bar just to finish customizing that. Feel free to use this time to do the same. I'll cut this portion of the video and I'll meet you 
back here for adding the custom theme to our desktop. Okay, so I've just um, added my favorite programs down here to my bottom dock or the launcher, and I have my top dock set up. At this point, before I start setting up all the um, theming for my new theme, because I'm not gonna just use the default one from uh, KDE Plasma, I actually wanna open up a browser, search or go to um, archlinux.org, and actually spell it correctly so you go to the right place. Come over here to Wiki and search for KRunner. You'll notice right now since we changed um, to the Latte doc that our Windows key or our Super key doesn't actually trigger anything. I like it to trigger KRunner, which is arguably uh, the most powerful reason to use KDE Plasma. KRunner is really, really fantastic. Um, so I like my Windows key or my super key, they call it the meta key, uh, to trigger KRunner. So there's a command to make that happen right here. Go ahead and copy that. Open up your terminal. Command shift or control shift paste to put it in and let that run. Now this isn't going to do anything until we log out and log back into our session. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And I'll meet you guys back after I re-log in. Okay, so we've just logged back in. Now you'll notice that when you hit the Windows key or the super key, this little search box drops down. This is KRunner. And so KRunner is great. Say I wanna search for uh, QJack control, which I need to control my audio settings when I use a DAW. Pops right up, I can hit enter and it opens up. Or VLC, pops right up, enter, open it up. It also searches documents and web pages if you want it to do that. Uh, very powerful tool. I love KRunner. That is really the reason why I stick around to, with KDE Plasma as often as I do. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it to the extent that I do. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and edit KRunner a little bit. So I'm going to hit these little sliders, go to configure KRunner. And I'm going to use it in the center of my screen. And I'm going to turn off retain previous search and hit apply. So close that out. Now when I trigger KRunner, it's right in the center and I can search for whatever I'd like, Caden Live, have that pop up, and if I chose to, I could go ahead and boot it straight from there. All right, so now that we've um, got KRunner configured, we've got our top and our bottom panels configured, we're going to go ahead and theme our system. The theme that I want to apply is actually the, I believe it's pronounced Lion or Lion theme. Uh, it's very popular right now. I, again, Nick from my Linux experiment uses uh, Lion or Layin, and it's just very aesthetic, very soft, transparent menus, rounded corners, all of that good stuff that just screams like modern desktops Layin has in spades. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. So hit the super key, should open up KRunner and search for settings. Go ahead and open up system settings and we'll be greeted right here. Actually, before we install our theme, you'll notice on this main tab of um, system settings, it says clicking files or folders opens them. I like to change that to selects them because I hate single click open in my file explorer. I don't know why that's default, but apparently some people like it. So I don't know. I just turn that off because I find the single click open a pain. All right, we're gonna come over here to the Appearance tab. Go ahead and click on that, and it'll default to Global Theme. So you'll see some global themes here. Uh, I don't really care for any of these global themes. That's not really true. I actually like Breeze a lot, um, and most of the time when I don't feel like editing my system, I just go with Breeze Dark and call it a day. But we're not doing Breeze Dark today, we're doing that lay-in theme. So we're gonna come down to the lower left-hand corner, excuse me, the lower right-hand corner over here and hit Get New Global Themes. So give that a second to load. And we're gonna search for lay-in, L-A-Y-A-N. And it's this first one here, the lay-in look and feel theme. Go ahead and install that. It might take a second, so we'll cut to once that's installed. All right, so it's asking me to type in my password because it's gonna install an SDDM theme. Go ahead and enter your password at this dialog box and hit 
OK. And it should finish the installation shortly. OK, so the installation for the lay-in theme has just finished. Uh, you'll notice here on Global Themes now, we have this new one. Uh, if you click on that, you can hit Apply. And the lay-in theme will, for the most part, apply to your system. Uh, we're going to change a couple of things here. Number one, come down to Application Style. We're going to come over here to Configure GNOME GTK Application Style. And you'll notice that this still says Breeze on it. And we don't have any option for lay-in which means when we come into a GTK-based application like our browser, it still has the breeze theming here, which we don't like. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Uh, come back here to settings, there we go. And we're gonna to go to get new GNOME GTK application styles. So go ahead and click on that. Again, it'll take a second to load. And we're going to do the same thing, search for lay-in. And then you'll see a couple of different options here. You'll see the Akamean GTK theme, and you'll see the lay-in GTK theme. Go ahead and install the lay-in GTK theme by hitting this install button. And we're looking for just the lay-in dark. It's the second option here for me. Um, and I'm going to go over to the right hand side and hit install. And then once it's installed, hit close. And now when I come to this drop down menu on GTK theme, I'll have lay in dark there and I'll hit apply. Coming back through these plasma style, you can see lay in selected. I like to leave it there. Colors, you can see lay in selected. I like to leave it there. Window decorations. I actually like to change a little bit by coming over here to title bar buttons. You can see you have the sample title bar, title bar buttons up at the top. I like to remove the little icons. I like to remove the little pin. I like to remove the little question mark. I like to drag the close all the way over here to the left hand side. And I personally like to remove the minimize and maximize buttons um, and just leave it with the close. And so I hit apply there. The reason I do that is it just keeps a nice clean title bar. And if I want to maximize something, I'll usually just drag and drop it. And if I want to move it around, I'll hit windows left or right or super key left or right. And if I want to minimize it, I usually just close it. I don't minimize a whole lot because I've gotten into the habit of using virtual desktops. Um, so minimizing, maximizing isn't part of my workflow anymore. But if it's part of yours, feel free to leave it where you want it. I know some people like to have the close on the left-hand side and the minimize, maximize on the right-hand side. Whatever suits your workflow, by all means, use that. Uh, fonts, I'm going to leave unchanged. However, they have it is fine. Icons, I don't like the icons that ship with the lay-in theme. To be honest, I don't like any other icons that I've found on Linux except for the papyrus icon thing. So I'm going to go ahead and install that um, by coming over here. I'm going to close my system settings. I'm going to open up my terminal. And I'm going to um, search yay for papyrus, P-A-P-I-R-U-S icon. And then you'll see here in the community repository, the papyrus icon theme. I'm going to hit one, hit enter enter my password, and let that install. OK, the Papyrus icon theme is done installing. At this point, I'm going to hit my super key to open KRunner, go back to settings. And I'm going to come over here again to appearance, scroll down to icons, and select Papyrus dark, and hit apply. And now I've got, well, I don't yet, but I'll have the Papyrus icon theme in a second. Uh, come over here to cursors. I like to use the default breeze cursor, so I'm going to select that and hit apply. And the splash screen, I leave with the lay in splash screen. Font management, I leave default. And launch feedback, I leave default. Now, you'll notice that my settings has like this weird theming issue going on. It looks really disjunct. 
We have the title bar that doesn't really match the background and these like buttons are, they have a gradient, a shadow on them. They have this raised texture. It's not this flat system thing that we've been looking for. Everything is just a little bit wrong. And if I close this and open up, say, my terminal, you'll notice the same thing. Like this, not the title bar, but the menu bar looks really out of place on my system. And the reason for that is we have a Kvantum theme that doesn't match our Layen theme. So if I come over here and I search for Kvantum or Kvantum and open that up, this is what I'm talking about. These are the edits we need to make. So to do that, we're actually going to open up our browser. I use LibreWolf, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, and we're going to search for Layen. You can use DuckDuckDo or Google or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna search for Layen Kvantum Theme. And then this first hit right here from store.kde.org, the Layen Kvantum Theme, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna come over here to Files and I'm gonna download this tarball right here, layin.tar.xz, and I'm gonna hit the download icon, and I always like to download from the mirror, I've always had better luck with that, and then I'm gonna save that just into my default downloads folder right here. It's done downloading, I'm gonna close this out, come over here to Dolphin, my file explorer, Come over here to downloads, you'll see the zip file here or the tar file here. I'm going to extract it. And now with that open, or with that extracted rather, I'm gonna come back to Kvantum, Windows key or super key to open up KRunner, search for Kvantum. I'm going to select a Kvanta theme folder navigate to downloads, there's the lay-in theme, hit OK, and hit install this theme. At the bottom here, you'll see lay-in installed. So now we can come to change delete theme, hit the drop down, scroll down to the bottom, and it's the bottom on mine, it'll be after K's, obviously it's alphabetical, hit lay-in, and hit use this theme. At that point, hit quit, and I don't know if it's necessary, but I always like to log out and log into my session to make sure all of these theming issues are applied correctly. So I'm gonna do that and I'll meet you here when I log back in. Okay, so we've just logged back in and now if we go back to settings, you'll see that everything is much more consistent. Those weird buttons are gone, the opacity is correct, everything matches if we open up our terminal same thing, everything matches, the title bar matches with the menu bar, all the buttons are flat like they should be. Everything is how we want it, it it's great. Uh, actually, while we have the console open here, let's go ahead and right click this. I like to go to um, text position and go icons only, and then over here on the right hand side, text position, icons only, I think that's a little bit cleaner since we have the global menu up here at the top. All right. So now that we have all the theming applied, um, there's one other thing that I really like to do, and that's install and use um, a different shell for my Termin ter Terminator, for my uh, terminal emulator. And so if we open up the terminal, the first thing you're gonna see um, probably is the sh bash shell, which is probably default on most distributions unless you're running something highly customized like Manjaro or Garuda, but even then I think a lot of them ship with Bash. Uh, we're actually gonna switch to uh, the Z shell. And so to do that, go ahead and yay, look for ZSH, Zish. And we're just going to install this second one here from the extra repository, Zish, a very advanced and programmable co command interpreter shell for Unix. So go ahead and hit two and let that install. Great, so Zish is running, or it's not running, but it's installed. Go ahead and clear the terminal with command L or control L. And we're just gonna type Zish 
and run Zish. So when the first time, the first time you run Zish, you're gonna be greeted with this little dialogue asking you to create a configuration file. Uh, go ahead and hit zero, creating the file and um, just exiting right out of it. And now you have this new shell, looks a little bit different than what you're used to. At this point, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna open up a web browser. Let me go ahead and split the screens here. All right, so web browser for uh, LibreWolf, I'm gonna go ahead and search for oh my zish, oh my zsh, and I'm looking for the GitHub. So you might actually see the first one here is their website. I prefer the GitHub one. Come over here to the GitHub, and we're gonna use the curl method here to install, so go ahead and copy that. Command shift paste, let that run. It'll just take a second here, and it's gonna say time to change your default shell to Zish. Do you want to change your default shell to Zish? Hit Y, hit enter. Go ahead and enter your password and let that run. So it's not going to take effect until you log out and log into your system again. So I know we're doing that a lot, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time. At this point, go ahead and log out of your system, log back in, and the Z shell or Zish should be your default terminal shell at this point. So go ahead, do that, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we've just logged back in after installing the Z shell. So now when we open up a terminal, you should see it just default to the Z shell. Uh, real quick before we continue, I've noticed that um, my top bar and my bottom bar are, are flickering a lot while I'm going through these things. I think that's an issue with OBS. This shouldn't be happening on your end. It's not an issue with the theme or anything. So if you notice the flickering at the top of the screen or like some menus coming in and out, just rest assured that's an OBS issue on my end. That's not anything wrong with the theming that we've just applied. Okay, so now that we have OhMyZish installed and we have the Z shell as our default shell, let's go ahead and open up our web browser one more time. I'll split the screens here. I'll try to, there we go. And we're gonna search for a couple of different plugins for OhMyZish, just to make the um, user experience with your Z shell a little bit more uh, intuitive and a little bit nicer. So the first one we're gonna search for is actually the auto suggestions. So go ahead and type ZSH auto suggestions into either Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever. And we're looking for this top Git, GitHub one here. Go ahead and click on that. We're gonna scroll down to this part here, installation install.md, click on that and you'll see the option for oh my zish right there. Click on that and it's gonna give us a git thing <laughs> that we need. Go ahead and copy that and paste it and it'll install this first plugin. Now in order to actually use the plugin, we're going to need a text editor. The one I use is Vim, so go ahead and look yay Vim and install Vim, for me that's package number two. So I'm gonna hit two, hit enter, type my password, install Vim, good. Control L to clear the terminal. And we're gonna type Vim, which is our text editor, and they're asking us to edit this file right here, which is gonna be the tilde forward slash dot zshrc and hit enter, you'll be greeted with this. Hit page down, come over to here to where it says plugins, and you'll see Git is already a plugin. Hit I to enter the insert mode, space, and it wants us to add this right here, ZSH auto suggestions. So go ahead and type that in, ZSH dash auto suggestions, and there's no comma or semicolon between these, it's just a space or you can even do a line break, it's fine. Um, once ZSH auto suggestions is typed, hit escape to exit the insert mode, hit colon, WQ to write and quit, and hit enter. And then we'll come back to our normal terminal. The next, we want, the next one we wanna add, the next plugin, is going to be ZSH highlighting. 
Go ahead and type that in. And again, we're looking for the GitHub. So this syntax highlighting, that's what we're looking for. Scroll down, find the install.md, scroll down, and we're looking with a plugin manager. And the plugin manager we're using is OhMyZish. So this one right here, you'll see this command, go ahead and copy that, same thing. Control Shift V to paste it into your terminal. Let that run. And then we need to edit our config file again. So hit up twice and we'll have that Vim command. Hit enter. And then you should already be where it says plugins. So go ahead and hit I, hit space, and then add this one right here, the ZSH syntax highlighting. Go ahead and type that in, zsh-syntax-highlighting. Hit escape, hit colon, wq to write and quit, hit enter, control L to clear the terminal. So now I want to theme oh my zish, because I think the default theme is just a little bit ugly. So before we do that, I actually need to install a new font. So if you're on an Arch system like I am, you can just type yay and power level 10K. And you'll see this, for me it's number three, TTF Mesonerd font power level 10K. That's the font we're looking for. Go ahead and hit three, hit enter, and let that install. And then control L to clear the terminal. After that's installed, that font, come over here, um, and we're gonna search for GitHub power level 10K. So right here, this top hit, GitHub ROM cat V power level 10K as ZSH theme. We're gonna come scroll down and we're gonna install power level 10K from our plugin manager, oh my zish. So go ahead and click on that. You'll have two options for mainland China or the default one for everyone else. Uh, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to use the default one for everyone else. Copy this top one, and I'm going to control shift paste that. Okay, so I've pasted it into my terminal. Go ahead and enter, let that run. All right, so now that we've installed Power Level 10K, we have to apply it to our settings the same way we did our two plugins. So go ahead and hit the up arrow twice, or three times rather, and you'll see the command vim tilde forward slash dot zshrc, go ahead and hit enter, hit page up to where it says zsh underscore theme. We're gonna delete, or first of all hit I, and then we're gonna delete Robbie Russell, but we're gonna leave the quotes, and then we're gonna type power level 10k forward slash power level 10k, escape colon wq, enter. So now at this point, we need to restart our terminal. Go ahead and close that. Windows enter, restart the terminal. And you'll see this like configuration wizard um, from power level 10K. So it's gonna ask you some questions. You can just hit Y, N, or Q based on your responses. So the first question, does this look like a diamond? Yes, it does. Does this look like a lock? Yes, it does. Does this look like the Debian logo? Yes, it does. Do all of these icons fit between the crosses? Yes, they do. Um, the prompt style here, you can choose what you like. I know a lot of people really like the rainbow aesthetic with these little chevrons. I love that too, but I wanna be a little bit more understated this time, so I'm actually gonna choose number one. I'm gonna choose lean. And then based on that, you can choose Unicode or ASCII or ASCII. I'm gonna choose uh, Unicode, so I'm gonna hit one. I like 256 colors, I'm gonna hit one. I like using a 12 hour format. Again, I'm in the United States, that's what I'm comfortable with, so I'm gonna hit three. I like um, one line on my command instead of two lines, so I'm gonna hit one. I like compact instead of sparse, so I'm gonna hit one. I like having many icons instead of few icons, so I'm gonna hit two. I like concise instead of fluent for the prompt flow, so I'm gonna hit one. And then I like to enable the transient prompt, so I'm gonna hit yes here. I'm gonna hit one for verbose uh, prompts. 
and then I'm going to apply the changes by hitting yes. So control L, clear the terminal. So now I have this nice little uh, shell here, my Z shell, themed the way I like it. Again, you can theme it differently depending on how you like to theme power level 10K, but the important thing is you just find the aesthetic you like. And so with that, I'll go ahead and leave you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.